Welcome to another TOEFL listening practice video. In this video, you will listen to a lecture, answer some questions about it, review the correct answers and explanations. Don't forget to subscribe for more TOEFL listening practice. Understanding how stars are born, evolve, and eventually die helps us grasp the dynamic nature of our universe. Let's start with stellar nebulae, the starting point of a star's life cycle. A stellar nebula is a vast cloud of gas and dust in space. Under the influence of gravity, parts of this cloud begin to collapse and condense. As the gas and dust come together, they form a protostar, which is a young star still in the process of forming. Once the protostar reaches a sufficiently high temperature and pressure, nuclear fusion reactions begin in its core. This marks the start of the main sequence phase. During this phase, a star fuses hydrogen into helium, producing energy that counteracts gravitational collapse. The duration of this phase depends on the star's mass. For example, massive stars may spend only a few million years on the main sequence, while smaller stars, like our Sun, can remain there for billions of years. As a star exhausts its hydrogen fuel, it transitions into the red giant phase. In this stage, the core contracts while the outer layers expand and cool. This expansion causes the star to become much larger and redder. For medium-sized stars, such as the Sun, this phase is followed by the shedding of outer layers, creating a planetary nebula and leaving behind a hot, dense core known as a white dwarf. In contrast, massive stars follow a different path. After the red giant phase, they may undergo a supernova explosion. A supernova is a catastrophic event that occurs when a massive star's core collapses under gravity and explodes, scattering elements into space. The remnants of the explosion can form either a neutron star, or if the core is massive enough, a black hole. Neutron stars are incredibly dense objects, composed mostly of neutrons. They often emit beams of radiation that can be detected as pulsars if they are oriented correctly relative to Earth. Black holes, on the other hand, are regions of space where gravity is so intense that nothing, not even light, can escape. They are formed from the remnants of the most massive stars and are characterized by their event horizon, beyond which information cannot be retrieved. In summary, the life cycle of stars includes several stages, from their birth in stellar nebulae, through the main sequence and red giant phases, to their ultimate end as white dwarfs, neutron stars, or black holes. Each stage plays a crucial role in the evolution of stars and the chemical enrichment of the universe. One, what is the primary focus of the lecture? Two, what is the initial stage of a star's life cycle, as mentioned in the lecture? Three, what can be inferred about the duration of the main sequence phase for different stars? Four, how is the lecture organized? Five, why does the professor discuss the red giant phase in the lecture?
6. What occurs after a massive star undergoes a supernova explosion? The lecture concentrates on the different stages in the life cycle of stars, detailing how they form, evolve, and end their existence. The lecture describes the stellar nebula as the initial stage where stars begin their formation process from a cloud of gas and dust. The lecture explains that massive stars have shorter main sequence phases, while smaller stars, like the Sun, remain in this phase for much longer. The lecture is structured around the different stages of a star's life, from its birth in a stellar nebula to its end as a white dwarf, neutron star, or black hole. The discussion on the red giant phase explains how stars change as they exhaust their hydrogen fuel and what structural changes occur during this phase. The lecture explains that the remnants of a supernova can form either a neutron star or a black hole, depending on the mass of the star's core.